So I've been thinking about the sort of content I can produce and honestly, I have no idea why distro review videos actually exist. Now, I'm not saying that if you enjoy distro review videos that you shouldn't enjoy them. It's your time, do whatever you want with your time. That's, that's your life. My point is that I'm probably not gonna make them and I don't actually enjoy them myself. Now, there are some exceptions, but the exceptions are very, very few. Now, I do also wanna clarify that first looks and reviews are not the same thing. They may look very similar, and a lot of people do like to use the terms very interchangeably, but they are fundamentally different concepts. So to do a review, you have to sit with the tool or sit with the distro for a couple of days, or in the case of a distro, probably a couple of weeks to fully, I guess, understand what's happening on the system, understand all the apps that are installed, understand how the apps are configured, maybe even understand some of the developer's methodology. Just get a full understanding of what's actually actually happening in the distro. So if you take someone like DistroTube, DistroTube does not do review videos. And he said this before, what he does are first looks. So they're structured in a very similar way to what I do with a software showcase. Basically you do enough prep to know what you're talking about Obviously with a distro, the amount of time you need to commit to that is much more, but it's still basically the same sort of concept. You haven't dug through every single line of the configs or really even most of the configs. You know what apps are generally installed, but maybe during the showcase, something will pop up that completely surprises you because you didn't actually realize it was there. So you know, obviously what desktop environment or window manager installed, you know, the terminal, editor, browser, email client, launcher, things like this, but you don't know like, all the individual packages or even really care at that point. I think the first looks have a lot of value because really the only thing that actually matters with the distro you pick is what your starting point actually is. Because every single other thing imaginable on the distro can be changed. So can you imagine anybody who actually uses Linux on their desktop system besides, I guess, your grandmother who you installed Linux Mint for on her 10-year-old laptop because Windows 10 wasn't working anymore? Anyone besides that person who actually runs the distro they installed as it comes out of the box. For example, this is my install of Arch Linux. It doesn't look anything like Arch Linux does out of the box. I'm running BSPWM, my terminal is Alacrity, I'm running Thunderbird as my email client. This is basically my own distro at this point, and this is what most people do with their distro. It doesn't matter if it's Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch Linux, Void, Gen2, every single person does this with their distro, and by the time you actually get to the point where you have enough knowledge to actually do a review, you're gonna have the distro at this point. So spending the extra time on a review doesn't really make any sense in my mind, and it makes even less sense when people do things like distro showdowns between different flavors of the same distro. So things like, say, Kubuntu versus Zubuntu. So if you don't know, that's Ubuntu running KDE and Ubuntu running XFCE. Can you really say these are different things at all? Because if you take Kubuntu, uninstall KDE, and then install XFCE on it, can you say that's even a different thing? Obviously they do have slightly different defaults, but if you go and change all of the Kubuntu defaults into being Zubuntu defaults, aren't those then exactly the same distro? Now that's not to say that reviewing desktop environments makes no sense because when you review something like say KDE, what you're doing is you're reviewing this little bubble that exists where everything basically shares the exact same dependencies. So if on my system I install, you know, Kden Live or really any KDE application, basically it's going to have to pull in 10 or 20 other dependencies because Every single thing in KDE relies on the KDE libraries. And this isn't just a problem with KDE. This is something that exists with every single desktop environment. So when you review a desktop environment, you're just reviewing this known bubble where things don't mix and match properly if you pull them in from other desktop environments. But the same problem doesn't exist on the distro side. And this is because if you break it down, Ultimately, a different Linux distro is just a slightly differently skinned version of Linux. Now, someone's probably going to say, but Brody, you're just talking about different flavors of Ubuntu. Obviously, they're going to be the same thing. That's what they're supposed to be. Okay, well, what about something like, say, Arch Linux and Manjaro? Now, I know that Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, and there's a very good reason I bring that up, and that's because if you were to, say, install Arch Linux and then decide, okay, I don't really like Arch Linux. I want to use Manjaro, but I don't feel like actually installing Manjaro. Well, what you can do is 
you can take Pac-Man and then point it to the Manjaro repos. You can install all of the default software available on Manjaro, the kernel, the configs, everything like that. And when you run NeoFetch, it's going to say that you're in Manjaro because you have the Manjaro kernel. And it looks like Manjaro, it runs like Manjaro. Basically, you've built Manjaro, so it's a very long detour, but they're the same thing now. And this isn't just the case with Arch Linux. If you have access to the source code, there's no reason why you can't turn any distro base into one of its child distros, because basically what separates a distro is package management. So Arch Linux is Arch Linux because of Pac-Man. Ubuntu is Ubuntu because of apt, so on and so forth. But even that isn't really that hard of a rule because you can go and compile apt and put it on Ubuntu and then get the Ubuntu kernel and put it onto Arch Linux and basically set up all the defaults of Ubuntu and you've literally just turned Arch Linux into Ubuntu and there's nothing that stops you doing that and that's because the borders between Linux distros are incredibly incredibly thin and if you know what you're doing they don't exist at all but and this is a very big but there are aspects of certain distros which I feel are so unique that they deserve to be reviewed by themselves so for example we have something like Bedrock Linux which is a meta Linux distribution which allows for users to mix and match components from typically incompatible distros so for example you could say take Debian's stable core utils, Arch Linux's cutting edge kernel, Void's run it system. You could take a PDF reader from Gen2. You could take a font from the AUI. You could take some game libraries from Ubuntu and basically merge all of this amalgamation of Linux software into one big ball of Linuxy goodness. Now, you can obviously do this on other distros, but. Bedrock handles it in its own special way, and I feel like that special way deserves a review. Or perhaps something like Distry, which isn't designed to be your typical desktop Linux system. You shouldn't actually run this as your day-to-day -day distro. Basically what it is, is a research distro to implement Daniel Bernstein's alternative method to do Linux package handling. And this method is so different to what exists on every single other distro that this aspect by itself, I think deserves a review. And I do plan to do a video where I look at that methodology. Now, another example we have is GNOME OS. This is basically a contained version of all of the latest features of GNOME where journalists and developers of GNOME can all test everything basically without having to wait for it to hit their main distro. Obviously, in the case of a developer, they want to have the cutting edge features so they can actually test what they've implemented. And a journalist needs to have the cutting edge features so they can write articles about them. And if you're using something like Ubuntu as your daily distro, it's going to take a while for that to actually hit your repos. And obviously, you have NixOS, which people keep bothering me about. And I, I guess people are bothering DT about it as well because he recently made a video on this. So I don't know if I'll make a video on this. I, I don't know what I'll do at this point. So even with these distros where they have these few aspects which make them actually stand out from the crowd, even in those cases, I wouldn't want to review the entire distro because in the end, you're still running Linux. And Linux is Linux. You're going to have some form of the core utils on it. You're going to have either the GNU implementations or the Plan 9 or some other sort of implementation. And it's going to look basically the same as everything else. And 99% of the time, it's going to run exactly the same. Yeah, there might be some differences between the amount of RAM the Manjaro kernel uses and the Ubuntu kernel uses. But ultimately, the differences are going to be very, very minor. And as I've been saying throughout this video, if you have a compiler, basically nothing stops you from turning anything into anything else. Now, I know that I've been talking about Linux this entire time. The exact same thing applies on the BSD side as well. So I could like look at a interesting aspect of FreeBSD or an interesting aspect of OpenBSD, but I'm not going to do something like, here's a review of FreeBSD. Here's a review of OpenBSD. OpenBSD versus FreeBSD. OpenBSD versus Arch Linux. Who is the king? Like, I don't think there's anything you can really say of value there because ultimately in the end, they're both Unix. They're going to both act in a very Unix-like way. They'll do it in slightly different ways, but the differences for the most part aren't really interesting enough to warrant their own dedicated review. 
So let me know, am I completely wrong about distro reviews and they're actually incredibly useful pieces of content and I just have no idea what I'm talking about? If that's the case, leave me a comment down below just explaining what the problem is here because I genuinely do not understand the point. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Chuka, Bento, Joseph, Pidity, Rogue, Tony, Brennan, John, and Marek, Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our pay and all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.